Don't miss a beat, join the notification squad by clicking that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video, and be sure to join our Discord to talk and get help with your code. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to The Source Code. My name is Deshaun, and today we are going to be looking at encapsulation. So sorry about last week between me and Ned, we both have uh, very busy schedules going on. I am finishing up my semester, Ned just picked up a second job. So things have been a little hectic and we've been a little slow on making sure that we're getting videos out for you guys. But so we're going to get started here on learning about encapsulation. And now encapsulation is one of the four fundamental object oriented programming concepts. Um, so basically encapsulation is just really a mechanism that we can use to wrap data or variables um, with methods and inside of one sort of singular unit or singular class, right? So what we can do is I changed this to person. I got a lot of feedback saying that this should have been called person and not people. So we called this person. So let's just get all of our variables here. So let's just go ahead and say private int. And this will be ID so we can um, identify them just in case we have somebody that has the same name, um, which is very possible, right? And then we let's say we go ahead and say private string name private string. Um, let's just go ahead and say F name and then let's go ahead and say L name for first and last name. And then let's just go ahead and say private int age. Great. So what's really cool in IntelliJ is if we go ahead and press alt insert, we can go ahead and generate um, constructors, getters and setters. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and generate our constructor and we want it for all of our variables. Boom. So basically all it's doing is just setting, so when we do go ahead and create a new person like we did before, so if we go ahead and say person, person equals new person, you can see that it's telling us that we need to implement um, all of these different arguments, right? So that's just all this is doing here. So telling us that these are gonna be equal to these, or we're gonna equal these to this. So the next thing we have to do is um, we have to generate our getters and setters. So we could do this manually by just typing um, private int um, get a or get ID set ID. But what we can do instead is we can just go ahead and say alt enter or alt insert, excuse me, and we can go ahead and generate getters and setters for all of our variables. And now uh, you can see there that we have a get a or get ID set ID get f name set f name get l name set l name. And it's pretty much just doing the same thing that it's doing for the setters. It's pretty much doing the same thing that it's doing up here, but we're just using methods for it instead. So now what we can do is let's go ahead and give them ID of um, one uh, F name. We'll say Deshaun and then we'll say L name Malik and then we'll say age 22, right? So now I have this new person. So what I can simply do is I can just go ahead and say system dot out dot print print line and we can just go ahead and say person dot get f name so now if we go ahead and run this here so you can see there that now we're able to get access to um, our person here similar how we did it before um, with the constructor but just slightly different but what's really cool about encapsulation is what we can do um, with it with a hash with a hash map right so we can have a a hash map of our keys which will be um an integer and then we can go ahead and put in person for our next for our value right and then we can go ahead and say people equals a new hash map so now what we can do is we can go ahead and just copy this right so now i can go ahead and just say people Oops, let me just go ahead and just say public static people dot put and we'll say an integer of one, right? Because we need just we just need an identifier there. And now we can go ahead and say new person. And now we have this person, right? And we can do this multiple times. And now I can just go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five, and new person one two, three, four, five, six. And let's just go ahead and say Tom Davis is going to be 25. And we're just gonna, oops, 
We're just gonna get rid of a few of those just because I don't really want to make up a bunch of different names and ages and everything. And we'll say this is 34, and we'll say he is 54. And this will be Frank. Um, Frank Thomas, right? So now what we're doing is we are putting these people or each one of these persons in this people hash map because we're using, um, we're able to set this by putting person or person class as our value, right? So now what we can do is I can go ahead and say system dot out dot print and I can, well, I can basically get whatever person I want, right? So now I can say um, person person equals people dot get and we can get whatever number we want, right? So we want to look it up by getting one, which is going to be our, it's going to be me. And now I can say person dot get f name plus space plus person dot get l name plus oops plus is plus person dot get age plus years old and I think we got an error there yeah we're missing our one parentheses there so now if we run this you can say Deshaun Malik is 22 years old, but if I change this to person two, it's going to be Tom Davis. And now you're probably wondering, well, how do I use the setters? So the setters are pretty much the same way, right? So if we go ahead and say person dot set age, and we'll say, um, so he's 25, so we'll say he's 26. We'll set age to 26 for, you know, actually this is what we'll do. We'll say person dot get age plus one because we want to give them one extra year, right? So now we can go ahead and say system dot out dot print line person dot get f name had a birthday birthday and is now person dot get age plus years old. So now if we run this, we can see here that Tom Davis is 25 Tom had a birthday and is now 26 years old. So that is pretty much the easiest way to explain uh, encapsulation and sort of the use for it. It's just a really easy way for us to sort of um, encompass or encapsulate all of our data into one singular class and be able to access all of that information with a few simple getters and setters. Now you can make this super, super complex and you can, you can really add quite a lot of complexity to um, an encapsulation class. Um, it all depends on what you want to do. So for instance, when you set something, you could have this set directly to a database as well. So that way when you update somebody's information, it'll update in a database, it'll update in a file, it can update in whatever you want. And the same thing with git name, you can make it so it doesn't even pull from here. You can make it so it pulls directly from a database, right? Because say you don't want anything saved locally, right? You don't want anything saved in memory. You just want it all saved and pushed back and forth between the database, which isn't always the best idea, but in some situations it could work really, really well. This is how you could do that with an encapsulation class. So that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a comment, drop a like, and subscribe.